Hey, what's going on? My name is Brian Bauer, and today, well, I needed to answer something. Do I still not like playing Fender Stratocasters? Well, today I decided we're gonna find that out. So, in my hands, I have a Fender Player Series made in Mexico Stratocaster. Now, there are a billion variations of Stratocasters out there. There's American made ones, there's Squires. I can't go over all of them today, and this is just going over this one, this particular one, and how I feel about it, okay? And do I like these things? Well, I'm gonna find out. So, and to start off, just a little spoiler, it's a pretty cool guitar. So what do I usually not like about playing Fender Stratocasters? Uh, it's usually, I don't like the necks. I'm used to Super Strats. They have super sleek necks, you know, a Floyd Rose or some sort of, you know, super nice fixed bridge and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, you can play those super well. And then you go to somebody's place, they have this sitting around, and you can't play it because you absolutely hate the neck profile, and it just feels awful, and, and it's just, it's gross. And another thing I really don't like, the volume knob placement. Now, it's a common complaint. A lot of people have learned to play around that, but for me, well, I just really don't like that. I'll never like that. Maybe I'll get used to it, but I'll still never really like it. But okay. And then this sharp old bridge. I don't really like that either. But do I still not like these things? Well, I'll never not like the volume knob. However, this guitar plays and sounds really good, okay? I know that's a little bit of a teaser. Either way, this guitar, let's just go over the specs of it a little bit. We have this non-locking tremolo. Not a massive fan of those, but it works Fine in this instance. We have uh, two tone hubs and a volume, a five-way switch, uh, regular tuners, a 22 fret neck, big old square neck joint, the traditional style. Um, you know, the small fender headstock. There's a bigger headstock variation that's out there, like on the Ingve Malmsteen guitars and stuff. Um, so there's a few variations of those. I like the smaller one. I think they just look better than those big old jumbo headstocks. This one here has a black finish, white pickguard. And honestly, as an OG Fender Stratocaster, I think this look is absolutely awesome. It's probably one of my favorites. Like it's just, it's just an iconic one. Now the Fender Stratocaster has been used by a billion different people and all kinds of different genres. There's, I'm not going over that. There is nothing I can tell you about the Fender Stratocaster that you don't already know. However, if you're used to other kind of guitars, like your Ibanez RGs and all that kind of fun stuff, well, maybe this guitar could work for you in that sense. Now, is this a heavy metal machine? No, we will get to that. We'll try that out. But what's, what are these guitars known for? Rock and roll awesome clean tones and I can tell you right now it's super versatile so let's get to some playing we'll start with a few cleans though today we're using the Kemper profiler I'm going through a few random Kemper profiles for this so I'll get to it this one's called chorus surface I don't know what amp it is you can look it up on the internet <laughs> That's on the second position. The bridge, middle. Here we go. Here's, here's the middle. Okay, right now, I think the cleans in this guitar are super good, you know? All right, no real crazy effects here, just whatever's uh, that in that one chorus uh, delay and all that stuff. Anyway, okay, tremolo right now. This is not a dive bomber. We're not gonna be going, wah, wah, wah. it's gonna be all out of tune and creaking and cracking and stuff. This tremolo right now, for just a little bit of that nice vibrato, okay? In that sense, it's really good. If you want to do dive bombs and, you know, get all the dime bag squealies and stuff going, we want to look elsewhere for another guitar. Now, since I said I didn't really like playing these guitars before, some of it could be the setup on them. This guitar is actually set up quite nicely, very low action. Right now, the neck profile, it's, it's kind of round, 
but I'm having absolutely no problems playing with it. I sat down with it about an hour earlier and it was totally cool. All right, let's go to something else here. So one thing that I, one thing I really do like about the Fender Stratocaster and uh, even my Ibanez RG and stuff is that you get this cool position between the middle and the bridge pickup. And while I can get that on the RG, it's got a humbucker. But this one, you can do this uh, little bit of country twang. It's like on the RG, weirdly enough. It's like that. <laughs> Not very good country, so whatever. I gotta get those banjo rolls down, you know that. Okay, but we already know that the Fender Stratocaster can do cleans amazingly, so we'll go to a little bit of overdrive. So a little bit of overdrive in this guitar here. So right now I'm using Guido Bunge's talks uh, Bogner SDT and Crunch. <laughs> Okay, so right now I find it a little awkward with the whammy bar there a bit, but I'm gonna say this, that neck pickup sounds super nice. Like it has kind of a creamier sound. I guess that's what you'd call it. I'm gonna call it that, so. <laughs> Man, I've been really marketed right now to like the 50, 60 year olds. You guys already know Stratocasters, what they sound like and what they do. And you guys grew up with that stuff. Well, guess what? You can still do all that stuff today too. It answers absolutely nothing. And I'm not even a good blues player. Like I'm not, I'm not even playing good. <laughs> we can play cleans and blues licks all day, but how do I use it in my context? I play metal a lot of times and I like to play leads and do a lot of fun stuff. Okay? So let's play it in my context. <laughs> Okay, I'm liking the tone of that, but I do find from playing earlier with certain tones, this guitar doesn't have that low end thump that some of the other ones do. It's a little bit more in the mid range. Honestly, I think that sounds pretty good. That is the PRS Archon. I'm gonna throw that cool delay on. This is what I use for a lot of things. This is the tone I used for like Dream Away, which I... <laughs>
honesty, I really do like the way that this sounds and plays. But my same old complaints is this whole section of the guitar. I do not like the, how, the way the bridge feels. I do not like where the uh, volume knob is and all that kind of stuff. Sound-wise, it's totally fine, even with the single coils. And I was happy to get one with the single coils because I am so used to humbuckers that I know what those are going to do. And generally speaking, most of them are going to sound good enough to get a something I like out of it. Now a humbucker is going to have a little bit more heft to it. Could you get by in single coils? I think you could. Uh, do I want them for certain things? No, I, I don't. I love them for the cleans and I, I mean, I think if I was to get another guitar or something like this that I probably would get a single coil up here in, in the neck position. I just think it sounds pretty cool. Now, when you are playing leads, that one of the things is, I always worry about the access up here, so let's give it a shot. keep trying to grab that whammy bar and it's always down here and it's not staying in place. I should tighten it up a little bit more and I could fix that problem, but whatever. Okay, overall, I'm way up here, I'm going. And I'm not having a problem. It is a fairly big neck joint. It's not like an all access Ibanez RG or something like that, or the Solars are so easy to get to. It's uh, But this is 22 frets. Uh, and honestly, it's not that bad. It's just something to work around. I think it sounds pretty good, honestly, playing leads and stuff. So in the overall, I think it's fine. You can definitely shred on this neck. This is not, by any stretch, the worst neck profile I've ever played. This is actually a really nice one. In fact, if I had this guitar in my collection, I'd be totally cool with it. However, what would I change about this guitar right now? Number one, we'll skip the volume knob thing. We'll just live with that. This bridge, these saddles are sharp. Now, some people be like, we had those back in our day. Well, guess what? These days we have a ton of options. And I know there's other options out there and different bridges and you could do whatever. So in the overall, that would change. A little sharp, don't love that. Um, I don't, I remember earlier I was playing with these uh, Tone knobs. Uh, now, I don't necessarily know what does what with those. I'm not a Fender Stratocaster expert, okay? I wanted to see if this works, okay? Um, they're okay. I kind of like them. Not the best things I've used in the earth. Um, okay, but traditionally, it, it's totally fine. Um, they're not the best that bridge bridge saddles would go. Um, right now, the lock it would need locking tuners. These tuners they're okay, but I think locking tuners would make this guitar a fair amount better, especially when you're doing uh, string changes and stuff. Uh, and the overall, I I don't hate the neck. The neck could stay just the way it is. Stainless steel frets in this would be pretty cool, but I mean it's a traditional guitar, so I don't care. The nickel frets would be totally fine. They'll last you a long time anyway. Some people like the feel of them even more. Um, does the guitar feel good for me? Yes. It has like that little, just a little bit of a contour here. It has the one right there in the back for you to like rest in right here. It feels pretty good. And the overall, would I be happy playing this guitar? Totally would. I might actually throw a Fender Stratocaster in my collection at some point. I quite like this one. Though, mind you, it's a rental. I'm not keeping it. It's going back. Somebody else will have this and eventually buy this. Is it a cool guitar? Absolutely. It is absolutely a cool guitar. Uh, like, it's just these, these little things. I just need to answer this for myself. Do I like this guitar? Yeah, especially in like the rock and clean context. Am I gonna play uh, like a whole metal set with this? No, but it's versatile. Could you do it? You absolutely could. I mean, you're not going to buy this, obviously, to play something like Animals as Leaders or like down-tuned stuff. You want to stick in like, you know, the 
half step down, uh, regular, you know, E standard. This is killer. Like, you know, just <coughs> this going. <coughs> It's just got a little bit of that twang to it. There's a little bit of punch that I really do like that some guitars just don't have. But that's okay. Those guitars have their place, and this one has it. Would I get a straight Fender Stratocaster? I think I would, although I would like to try some different models over time. Uh, and try some, you know, some American ones, some Mexican ones. Find the one that has the real mojo. Is this good? I don't know the price of it. Does If I was to have this guitar here right now to play some cleans and do some certain recording with it, I'd absolutely use it. Okay, so does that answer any questions for anybody else? Probably not. Does it answer questions for me? Absolutely. And that's why I shot this video. You guys can click the subscribe button, the like button, the notification bell, and all that fun stuff. If you uh, know anything about Fender Strats or whatever you want to tell me about them in the comments or just say hello, go right ahead. That's super cool. Anyway, um, completely on professional video. You guys have an awesome day. And maybe I'll do another video with this uh, really soon, okay? And I've got new music coming. I promise. I'm actually recording it right now and writing it. It's, I'm pretty pumped. So anyway, you guys have an awesome day. And I'll see you all again next time. See yous.